Kia ora, good evening. A memorandum of understanding between the fire service and St John Ambulance is proving to be a lifesaver with rapid response times for patients. There are instances where ambulance staff can be tied up and fire can get there in the first instance, which is improving the chances of survival for those suffering cardiac and respiratory conditions. In uh, urban cities like Invercargill, you will get two ambulances plus a uh, fire appliance. So in many cases like um, Edendale in the country you may have the fire plants turn up first and indeed even in the city that happens. So the rapid responses and, and rapid treatment is the answer. So we carry on all appliances, we, we carry the AEDs which is the cardiac heart unit and the boys can go straight to work. And just through that alone since last, the memorandum started about December last year, since that time uh, we can relate at least 15 survivals to rapid uh, response and arrival times um, separate to the ambulance and then there's been many more including the ambulance the, the survival rates gone up as well it's definitely been enhanced so it's a win-win for the uh, communities and that's where we need to be. People are not getting confused when they ring 111 and uh, do select ambulance because there is a cardiac arrest or whatever they might be facing with a heart problem and, and have the fire service arrive. Are they confused about that? Yes, it does. Um, we, we do have our lads turn up and uh, the occupant says, what are you doing here? I, I called the uh, ambulance. But in that case, that's where we were closest and we have arrived first. And the ambulance may just be around the corner, so we get both crews getting in and doing the work, and hopefully that person will survive through rapid intervention. So yes, there is a uh, people are surprised, and that's really want, what we want to do from today is let the people of Southland and indeed Otago know that, and the whole country know that when you get a purple call or a cardiac arrest, respiratory, that you will have ambulance, you will have fire turn up, and it shouldn't be a surprise, and it will enhance, enhance the situation, I'm sure. Saving lives, ultimately. ultimately. Do you know roughly what percentage of calls that you're dealing with now through the fire service in Invercargill are related to perhaps what would normally be an ambulance call out? Yes, I can. Uh, the last month, for example, in Otago and Southland, which is our region, we had 30 calls to um, directly related to uh, motor vehicle accidents, um, person, basically persons near death and uh, so we had 30. In the last year they've actually gone, since the memorandum of understanding, they have gone up 400% for the fire staff. So that brings on a lot of other issues as you can well expect, but for our communities it's a great enhancement and uh, they're getting two ambulance, fire and uh, hopefully a greater chance of survival rate. People, police would like to hear from anyone who witnessed the incident that saw a 14-year-old girl indecently assaulted on Charlotte Street in Vicargill on Friday the 19th of September. The young girl was pushed to the ground but did not sustain any injuries. The male who assaulted her was described as approximately 180 centimetres tall, wearing a dark-coloured puffer jacket and was last seen walking with two female associates on Charlotte Street after the incident. Anyone with information that may assist in identifying the male and his female associates is asked to call Crime Stoppers on 0800 555 111. Severe weather warnings have been lifted for Southland, but winds continue to batter the region. Coastal Southland suffered westerly gales for much of the day, and gale warnings remain in force for Fovo Strait. While the west to southwest flow should ease by Thursday for the rest of the country, strong winds are still likely on southern coastlines. On Saturday, another front moves onto the South Island as a low over the Tasman Sea edges closer to the country. Two Invercargill homes required assistance from the fire service today in securing windows and roofing iron due to the windy conditions. The Invercargill Public Library is tightening up on who has access to their computer suite at the end of the week. As from this Sunday, no one under the age of 14 will have access to the 13 computers that make up the library's computer suite upstairs. During school holidays and after school, unsupervised children can prove to be a distraction for library users and the move will provide a more equitable service for everyone. This computer suite is in high demand with people often queuing in the morning and weekends to get access to the free service. Anybody under 13 cannot use it at the moment. Um, 
unsupervised and we're making a change up to 14 to be in, in line with the rest of our policies with regard to unsupervised and unaccompanied children. So they have access to Facebook, they have access to uh, some um, sites, there are filtering um, software is on it as well. So. Um, it's mainly to give equity of access to a variety of people. So children that are under 14 shouldn't be having Facebook accounts anyway they and um, that's, this is just tightening up on the access for that? That's right and we really are tightening up on um, unsupervised children throughout the library but the computers in particular. Is it a problem for you, maybe at school holidays more than other times? More than others it can be, yes. What is the policy for, for the library around that? Um, anybody under 14 cannot be here unsupervised, so it, it's up to the discretion of the staff to follow that up, but that's the, that's the policy. What will the benefit be in tightening up on that, uh, that age group? Hopefully it will help us with some of the behaviour problems that we've had, and it just makes it more uh, better for the rest of the public who are using it, who find it often a wee bit disturbing if there are groups of people who are using the library making lots of noise with the computers. Stay with us after the break, a train ride that commemorates World War I plus taking heritage to the CBD. Welcome back. The Southern Institute of Technology has been given the opportunity to host a national teaching conference this week. The Ako Aotearoa Teaching and Learning Conference is a nationwide event and will see lecturers and tutors from around the country sharing different methods of tertiary learning and teaching. We've got um, Dr. Kerry, or Professor Kerry Reed Sewell. She's coming from Australia and she's um, uh, got quite a good reputation in simulation training for nurses where she gets into character and actually trains the nurses that way instead of the old lecture time of teaching. We've also got Dr. Garnish Nana who's coming um, to talk as well. Peter Coolbear from Aotearoa. People presenting their yep. research in the fields of um, engaged students, um, te trades and technology, um, students who are not familiar with being in the tertiary sector and how to encourage them to have success in their learning. So what kind of an opportunity is this for SIT to host such an event? It's a fantastic opportunity for our tutors to come along and hear international and national speakers about topics that are really important to them to help them teach better. It's a great opportunity for them to share their expertise because you know, we've got tutors who are experts in their field. Um, it's a fantastic opportunity for tutors from around the country to come together and share their experience with each other and share great ideas, fantastic new technology, how to get students engaged in the classroom, research that staff are doing that they can share with each other. It's, it's really invaluable. 390 Southlanders will travel from Invercargill to Dunedin on Sunday to retrace the steps of soldiers leaving for World War I. The dawn to dusk train trip will give people of all ages the opportunity to take part in commemorating the departure of World War I soldiers from Port Chalmers 100 years ago. It's proven so popular the trip's already sold out. Sharon Rees has more. We just advertised to all the RSAs who told their networks and yeah, it filled up and we had about 100 on the booking, on the waiting list, waiting to get on, so very popular. The train stopped running in, from Invercargill, the Southern has stopped running around 2002, so it's kind of a unique event in the way that kids that are 10, 11 now haven't been on a train from Invercargill, and then also families who have connections with the soldiers that went away to World War I, so great uncles, great grandfathers, they can yeah, go on the train and kind of relive the experience that they went through. And what kind of things will be on the train on the way to Dunedin? Uh, so we've got a couple of surprises in store. So we're going to do some wee mementos for people to take home from the train. And we have um, kids packs. We're going to give out to all the kids so they have stuff to do because it's a four and a half hour journey. And there's a commentary speaker through all the train carriages. So there'll be uh, kind of there's an interview that Dr Aaron Fox did with Fred Rogers, who was at World War I, and so there'll be little excerpts of that playing throughout like what training was like and what war was like, so it'll be quite interesting and, yeah, quite cool. Did the Defence Force have anything to do with this when it's in Dunedin? Uh, yes, so there'll be a, mili a formal military reception at the train station in Dunedin, so the, there's a committee up there that are putting on all the uh, commemorations. Next March is Heritage Month throughout Southland and a range of events are already being planned. Those organising yesterday's, next year's Heritage Festival are hoping that business owners and retailers in Invercargill City will get involved and potentially dress their windows in period costume to mark the occasion.
I've spoken to the Inner City Working Group and um, I've spoken to a few other organisations like Venture Southland, the Library, the Chamber of Commerce, the ILT. Uh, we wanted to gauge their interest in the idea first at that sort of organisational legal level and if we can get their support um, for the idea then hopefully then the retailers in Esk Street and beyond, um, we're hoping D Street, Tay Street and Kelvin Street as well will get involved. What sort of, what sort of a heritage era are you talking about? Well, there's been a bit of discussion about that. We haven't actually narrowed down an era. We're kind of thinking that we'll keep it broad. Uh, that way we can have everything from maybe a horse and cart and people dressed in that sort of 1800s attire right through to maybe classic cars from the 60s and 70s um, and maybe other things that aren't quite so old but are still not so common these days. A little bit of time and perhaps money involved in, in sourcing those sorts of materials and for a display. Would there be an opportunity to um, perhaps subsidise those costs? Um, I'm not sure about that at this stage, but we are hoping that by getting um, sort of lots of different groups and organisations involved, that they might have um, things that they could lend or donate um, to, to businesses to dress their windows. So maybe they might have photographs that we could take copies of, or various vintage machinery clubs or that kind of thing might have items that could be um, used. It's Get Ready Week throughout the country and the Southern District Health Board are asking staff if they're prepared in the event of a disaster. What would you do is the theme of this year's Get Ready Week, a week in which the Ministry of Civil Defence and Emergency Management raise awareness of the need to be prepared in the case of a disaster. The Southern DHB is reminding staff of steps to take to ensure they're ready, including practising household emergency plans, maintaining survival items and having a getaway kit in case they need to leave in a hurry www.getthrough.govt.nz has more information on how to prepare yourself in the event of a disaster. Next on Sport, we have highlights from South Island League final held at Rugby Park on Saturday. From the news team, though, it's good night.